Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're looking at conservation of energy with dissipative forces, namely friction. Let us give you an example of conservation of energy without dissipative forces. Let's take a tennis ball, a slope, and let's roll the ball down. And the ball doesn't seem to lose any energy on the way, it just carries on its merry way. Now let's take another ball. Looks very smooth, but let's try the same thing. You see how it grinds to a halt. What we have here is a ball with sand in it. So when we roll it down the slope, it loses its mechanical energy. In other words, the potential energy at the top here gets converted into kinetic energy. But all the while, it's being changed into friction. And one can, in fact, hear one can hear that some of the energy is being dissipated as sound a very little bit, but most of it is turned into heat, even though we would not notice the difference. So let's apply a particular formula, which we have to be familiar with. Work done by non-conservative forces, namely friction, is equal to the change of kinetic energy plus the change of potential energy. Now, whenever we see change or delta, we should immediately think that a change of anything, a change of anything is always the final, EK final, minus EK initial. So that is what change of kinetic energy is equal to. The final state minus the initial state, plus what would a change of potential energy be? It would be E P final minus E P initial. See how we've used subscripts to identify all of our factors. So let's apply that equation to this situation and let's find out what was the work done by the non-conservative force of friction as this rolled down a slope and came to a halt. How much work in fact was lost? So let's start with what was its initial kinetic energy? Well if it's going at zero kilometers or meters per second and we know that EK Let's see, we can write it here. E K is equal to a half M V squared. Half mass times velocity squared. But if we have a velocity of zero, E K becomes zero. So if it's not moving, it's got zero kinetic energy. And when it ends, it's not moving, so it's got zero. So what is the final kinetic energy? Naught minus what's the initial kinetic energy naught plus what is the final potential energy. Now how do we work out potential energy? Well as something rises it gains potential energy and as it drops, let's call this its ground state, it's got zero potential energy anywhere along here but as it is lifted and placed on there, it gains potential energy. So its final state is zero potential energy because it's at its lowest point. So E P final is going to be equal to zero because it's sitting there minus E P initial. Now what is potential energy defined as? Well we have a formula, it's in our data sheet. E P equals M G H M G H So let's find the mass of this ball by weighing it and we know what G is and we know what H is. So let's get a spring balance and let us weigh it. So here is our spring balance, here is a 
bag and let's weigh this ball. So our spring balance has been zero. We drop it in there and we read it and it comes to 70 grams. 70 grams is the mass of our ball. But we don't work in grams, we work in kilograms, so we're going to divide that 70 by 1,000. So, let's apply our formula. Mass is 70 grams converted to kilograms, divided by 1,000 is 0, 0, 0,7 kilograms, that's the mass, times G, which is 9,8, times height in meters. Let's measure the height that our ball was raised to using this and it is 0.135 meters 0.135 meters 0.135 meters so multiplying that all together we've got 0 0.0 7 times 9.8 times comma 135 equals and we get 0 comma 0926 so this all adds up to 0 plus naught minus our answer so it becomes not plus but minus 0, 0, 0,0926 and our answer is measured in joules so notice our negative answer what does that mean it refers to the fact that if this is our direction of displacement the work is done, friction is done in the opposite direction, and when that occurs, we get a negative quantity for the amount of work done. So, we have found, therefore, our answer there is our final answer is equal to 0, 0,09 joules is our work done by the non-conservative force of friction. If, as a matter of interest and for fun, we want to work out what was the frictional force, what we could do is we could use our formula work done equals force of friction, force times displacement, or delta x. So all we have to do if we want to find how much frictional force we've got is let's work out, let's roll this down here, let it come to a stop. Presume that our frictional force has acted uniformly the whole length of its travel. Take it from the middle here. So if we want to work out the frictional force of this, that this ball is undergoing, work done is equal to force times displacement I'm going to just put it here, which is equal to, we know what the work was done, it was this here that we calculated, is 0, 0,09 equals force of friction times displacement, which is what we measured as 0, 0,4, hmm, I've forgotten, 4, Eight, uh, four, 0, 0,4, five meters. 0, 0,4, five meters. And therefore, we can work it out as finding the frictional force we divide. We take this to the other side. We divide both sides by 0, 0,4, five. That cancels out, and frictional force is equal to 0, 0,09 divided by 0 0.45 
equals a force of comma 205 newtons. So our frictional force is equal to, frictional force is equal to 0, 0,205 newtons, or if we were to round it off to two decimal places, 0, 0,21 newtons. So, 0, 0,21 newtons is our non-conservative force acting over that distance of 0.45 meters and there we've worked out both the energy lost due to non-conservative forces and we've in fact calculated the frictional force or non-conservative force as being equal to 0,21 newtons.